my name is Wayne Will. Uh, thanks for joining us here again today. Um, we're going to do a quick uh, overview of some of the key features and benefits of the systems and components on these exact emerge planners, right? So, uh, kind of, we'll touch on some of the things that Jeff talked about a little bit um, earlier. If you were here for that session, uh, as far as row cleaners and closing wheels, things like that, and those components. But uh, we're going to get more into depth on to the some of the meter components and the brush belts themselves, right? So any guys running Exact Emerge right now? A couple of you? Okay. So um, this may be some review uh, for some of that. And then some of the things to take a look, look at uh, pre-season, right, before we hit the field this spring. So uh, that being said, some of the internal components of these meters, right? I'll go ahead and pop this guy off, maybe. There we go. Okay, so we've got our meter pops off the row unit just like that. Uh, th some things to check for uh, before we hit the field this spring, or hopefully after you've hit the field already, but uh, definitely check your seals, right? So this is still a vacuum meter planter, right? We didn't lose that capability. We didn't change any of that. We still need that good seal on our, on our vacuum doors here. So definitely make sure that's in good shape, good condition. Um, going on to bowls here, right? So. Make sure we swapped to the right bowl, right? We didn't leave the soybean bowl and we're gonna go plant corn, right? Because then your, your population is gonna be a little off from what you want. So um, go ahead and verify that you've got the right bowls um, or put them in to your planter, right? So maybe sometimes you're hanging them up after you're done planting, right? Hanging on a pole so that they're all in, in good condition throughout the rest of the, the off season. So and then you take the bowl off, get inside. You got another seal here. You're gonna make sure that's in good condition, right? So you don't want that to be cracked or brittle or broken, uh, missing any pieces. So check that out. Um, <clears throat> then getting inside, um, we've got obviously starting at the top. You got your mini hopper. Then we've got our seed guide, right? So this guy right here, this is a wear component. So make sure we check that out uh, every season. Um, this. There's half of this piece, this whole piece comes out, but half of it you can replace through parts. You can replace the whole thing, but typically just the half that wears out, you'll replace that from, you know, anywhere from 5,000 acres or something like that. So um, just a rough estimate, but it'll vary depending on soil conditions. If you've got really sandy soils, if you're pulling sand into the meter from time to time, uh, things like that. So definitely check out your seed guide, make sure that's in good condition. And then you've got your doubles eliminators, right? So you've got an inner and an outer, right? So this would be your inner, the one with the three fingers, and your outer is the one with five fingers on it, right? And that's the one on the inside on the hub housing. So definitely check that out. Make sure that those aren't uh, worn past the point. So if you look from my angle here, you can see the fingers sticking up just past the housing on the outer one, the one with five fingers, right? If you can see the tines sticking above, they're okay, right? If they're, stick, if they're down below the side of the hub housing, you need to replace that, right? Uh, and then again, on your inner doubles eliminator with the three fingers, just make sure that's in good condition. Make sure these are flexible still. Um, make sure they're not worn down past the point. I think it's like eight millimeters is the length uh, of the, the fingers themselves. So make sure that's in good condition. Uh, make sure this moves, um, the adjustment here. Make sure it's still able to get into the right spot. And then we'll go ahead, if we're gonna start planting corn, we're gonna set that in the middle position, right? So there's three lines that you can see there. We'll go ahead and set that in the middle position for corn, right? So, and then we move into soybeans, we can pop that baby all the way back, right? So then taking a look at our agitation strip, right? So there's, there's different agitation strips depending on what crop you're planting, right? So if we got the green ones in and we want to plant soybeans, that's a no-go, right? We're going to want to plant with the yellow or the smooth strip, right? So um, they did color, they started color coding them four or five years ago now. Um, if you have agitation strips that are not color coded, I believe this guy over here, <clears throat> this is the same agitation strip. It's just an older one, right? So once they started color coding them, that helped out with identifying which one we used for each crop. So the green ones are for corn, they're gonna be rough, and then the yellow ones are for soybeans and they're gonna be smooth, right? Okay, so again, these just pop out. There's little clips on the back side of your hub and you can pop this guy off. Just like so, and you can replace it uh, or put the right one in, making sure that's in good condition. 
okay? And then you've got brushes in here, right, to help maintain your seed pool at the bottom of your mini hoppers. So make sure your bristles are in good condition so you don't want seeds to go past uh, where, they, where they drop off into the brush belt. So making sure that's, that's in good shape. <clears throat> okay. Um, if you've been around Exact Emerge for any amount of time, is it the same adjustment for hub height as your Max Emerge style meters? No, right? So these are going to be really tight compared to what you've seen in the past, right? If you're using a Max Emerge style meter with just your flat plates, this is going to be a quite significantly tighter than those in the past, and that's good. We want these to be tight. Because this is a high-speed planter, we need that uh, instantaneous control of where that hub is at all times. So it does need to have some friction. And that being said, um, <laughs> there's a lot of schools of thought on how tight to make it. Um, I would say make sure that if you're going to err on either being too tight or too loose, err on just to the side of being too tight. Because that will wear as the season goes on and that will eventually get become looser, right? So, um, but that can affect several different things as far as population, uh, seed spacing, things like that. So making sure that hub height is adjusted correctly. With that being said, we have these little pads right here, these white pads, and these are different from this older meter here as well, All right? They switched from steel wear pads. So there's four on each one of these meters, but they switched from steel to ceramic. And if you see, if you look closely, there's actually a wear spot you can see a little dimple in those wear pads, right? So those will disappear over time. Once those dimples are gone, go ahead and replace these wear pads. That way your bowls don't wear into the meter hub housing itself um, because it is so tight, right? So that's important to maintain the integrity of, of your hub housing by replacing your wear strips here, right? Or your wear pads. So, okay. Um, <clears throat> another thing to note, you got a little vent here, right? So you've got to exhaust your vacuum here somewhere, right? So, or your CCS pressure. Um, and then just making sure that this isn't full of debris as you're planting, right? So we're planting in those, those higher debris situations in the field, You've got a lot of residue. This can actually catch some of that residue and you'll lose your, uh, your vacuum. So uh, keep an eye on that as well. So, okay. So we talked about the meters. Let's talk a little bit about the bread and butter or the brush belt of our exact emerge planter, right? So these guys is what actually delivers the seed to the trench, right? In the past, or other, other planters that we still have on the market today, with a seed tube, the only thing taking the seed to the trench is gravity, right? So uh, we're eliminating the factor of gravity and seed roll, right, when we use this brush belt. So one of the main goals of the brush belt technology and delivering the seed to the trench this way is to help deliver it in a dead drop situation, right? We don't want that seed to roll in the trench when it hits the ground, uh, so we do need to deliver it so it just drops and stops, right? We don't want it to roll or move at all. That'll affect your seed spacing, your emergence, all that. So um, that being said, there's a few things that make this particular piece of equipment work and work well, right? So first things first, there's a little cover on the outside here. You just pop that off. There's little clips that hold it together. <clears throat> Inside, you got your brush belt, right? And this is a little bit different from our older style here as well. Um, so if you have one that has yellow stripe on it, you should probably replace it because that is an older part. So uh, same components, but the newer ones don't have that yellow stripe on them anymore. And then uh, we do have, you see these springs in here, we've got a cam that actually loosens and tightens uh, our brush belts. So that's loose and then give it a tap on the bottom and you can pull this brush belt off. And then there is another cover on the bottom here. Go ahead and pop this off. So now our brush belts can come completely out, right? So things to look for on your brush belt. <clears throat> uh, make sure your brush belt doesn't have any extra uh, or places where the bristles have begun to have a memory, right? So they, they've kind of deformed a little bit. So just make sure you run your fingers through it. Uh, kind of just inspect it, inspect the backing as well. Make sure the backing's in good condition. Uh, that will start to fray over time uh, as it wears. Uh, and then also just make sure there's no bristles missing, right? So um, <clears throat> if you don't clean out your brush belts every season, at the end of the season, and you happen to leave any seed in them, uh, these are nice little uh, 
snacks for mice. So the mice will actually climb up in here, chew your bristles up, find the seeds. So definitely purge the, the brush belts at the end of the season, make sure they're clean. And they will also deform too, right? If you've got a seed stuck in that brush, it's gonna sit there all season or all winter, right? To start planting again, that's gonna deform your bristles. So you definitely don't want that. Um, as it comes to the end of the season, uh, or the planting season, go ahead and at the very least, loosen the tension on every one of the brush belts on your planter, right? So best practice would be to take your brush belts out and hang them on a PVC pipe, roughly three to four inches in diameter, right? Hang them up so that they don't have that stretching force on them all season, right? Um, that's best practice, but um, at the very least, just loosen the tension Two on your brush belts. So, so <clears throat> this is the brains of the operation here, right? So, you got your seed sensor. This is what's giving us our population data, our seed spacing data. Uh, and this, going forward, this is another critical component in the exact shot um, technology, right? So. This is the sense in the Sense and Act technology that we're going to see on planters next year, right? So we're going to have the ability to, with exact shot, right, place fertilizer right on top of the seed instead of banding it in the whole trench, right? So we're going to be able to spray that fertilizer, that starter, right? Uh, well, not necessarily starter, but whatever we're going to be putting it down um, with our planting operation on top of the seed. So, so again. This is the brains, this is what's counting our seeds and um, giving us that information on our display. So again, make sure this is in good condition, right? Every season, check this, this lens out. If you do have a problem with a lens, right? You've got moisture in there or it's cracked or it's scraped up so you can't see. Um, you can actually replace the faceplate on this uh, lens so you don't have to replace the whole sensor, right? So that's a, that's a good thing because the sensor is a lot more expensive than just replacing the, the, the lens cover. So, um, so your brush belt cartridge itself, you've got a couple of things you can look at here too. Um, you've got some guides, uh, brush guides, make sure those are in good condition. Those will wear out over time. Um, then obviously your, your bearings and your pulleys, things like that. You've also got at the bottom here, you've got a brush belt reconditioner. So this little wire here <coughs> rides at the bottom and just kind of fluffs the bristles as it goes by. Make sure that's in good shape because that will actually get sharp over time. It'll turn into like a little razor blade. Um, and then essentially you're gonna be shaving down your bristles on your belt and that's not gonna be good. So make sure this is replaced if it gets sharp, right? Um, so <clears throat> those are kind of the internal components of the brush belt and the meter. I very quickly wanna to touch on some of the things we left behind when we took all these components off, right? We've got a couple things here. Um, we've got our integrated seating motors here. So. This is where the electric drive okay, type planners really shine, right? Here. So just to wrap it up, uh, I do want to touch on this really quickly. Uh, these motors are swappable. So if you do have any issues in the field, you can take these motors off and you can move them to different row units to see if problems follow, um, as well as the control units, right? We've got a row unit controller on every single one of these rows. Um, you can swap those back and forth. That's the beauty of electric drive components, right? You can swap them around. And if the issue follows, you've got a problem with that particular component, right? So. Uh, I want to point that out. And then, yeah, obviously, got your regular components here. You got your gauge wheels, trivia openers, downforce sensors inside every one of these row units, right? Because this is in, uh, individual hydraulic row downforce, right? We've got the hydraulic downforce system. So every one of these row units does have its own force sensor in it. So make sure that your, your wires are hooked up. Everything's good there. Um, if you have an older exact emerge planner, there is a, they updated the row unit controllers themselves. Um, in the last couple of years. So we have the ability to put on these new row unit controllers which come with a better downforce sensor connector. Has anybody had problems with the IRHD's downforce sensors? Yeah, so there was some problems with those downforce sensors earlier on because they were a screw in type but they didn't actually thread on um, and they were coming apart in the field getting dirt in them. They changed the type of the downforce sensor connector uh, to a weather pack or a, a Deutsch tile connector. So a lot better uh, uh, connection there. But. Um, <clears throat> If you guys do have questions, here's that older style downforce sensor connector that I was talking about. It has threads on it, but it doesn't actually thread. So uh, that was kind of one of the, uh, the downfalls of that. But. <laughs>